Hello, hi, and welcome to today's video in which we are going to look at UDTs, user defined types. Um, as this is a quite complex topic and very broad, I decided to split it in at least two videos, probably two videos. Um, so this time we're just going to talk about how do you actually um, not implement them, but how do you create UDTs for later use in the next video maybe videos, I will show you how to use um, those defined types in your program. <clears throat> I will also explain shortly what is a UDT and why do we need those, right? Why do we need our own data types? If I just check out, right? If we just check out, hey, I can use PLC text. By the way, I already have, a, my program is empty that I'm using here for this uh, video, but I already have some IOs. I'm using two tanks. Um, and they have some inputs, they have some outputs. So they are already using variables. And each of those variables, each of those tags has a data type. Integer, real, word, time, character. There's plenty. There's many, many data types. Um, and we can define our own. Like the PLC right now knows, hey, a Boolean, that's either a zero or a one. That's what the uh, PLC knows. Hey, an integer, this is 16 bit and it represents a number like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, minus 27, 2704. It knows that if we take a real number, the PLC knows, hey, this real number indicates we have a, a decimal point. So those data types that we have available from the beginning on, those are the standard data types that pretty much Every programming language has very similar ones and they have the same baseline. You have some type, some number types, you have some, um, some logic types like Boolean just on off or word just multiple on offs. You have those decimal points, you have time, you have standard things that you always need, right? Those are there already given. Um, what we can do in addition to this, if we need our own definition of something, we can create our own data type called user defined type. And we're using an example here of um, these two things. So we have two tanks. We have two liquid tanks. Um, and those two, they are very similar. They might not even be exactly the same. Some could have more inputs, some could have less inputs, some, some one of these could not use a fill level or something. They could be different. But in general, they are very, very similar. So we could use the same data for them, right? We're talking about the same data. We can create a data type tank. And this is tank number one. This is tank number two. We, we will create a tank data type that is a collection of what this data, uh, what this tank current status is. So for example, this, the tank, if we look at it, it has a fill level, like the water could be at 20 liters or so. It has a maximum level. Maybe we want to define a minimum level, like the water is not allowed to go below a level, or maybe we want a warning level at a couple of liters. Hey, this is where we want to end. Um, so we need to define what is a tank for us. Right? If we know what a tank for us is, we will just define a data type and from then on, everything that has to do with this tank here is stored in that one variable. So this one variable will represent the whole tank, not just is it on off, but also what is the current level, how's the flow, what's warning levels and so on. This is all stored in one variable and that's a user defined type. Right? So let's check out TIA portal again. How do we do this? How do we do this? In the list here on the left side, we have the so-called PLC data types. If I open this up, you see this is pretty much empty. It might be that there are already some depending on which uh, functions you use. Some functions, if you implement them in your program, they automatically add specific new data types to your program. But I have not done that here in the program, so this is empty the list. I can just click here and add new data type. This new data type right now is called user data type. I can just rename it, right click, rename, or simply hit F2, or I click in here, wait a second and click again. And I will say, this is a tank. So now I need to define, hey, what 
is a tank? What variables do we need? And I made my mind in before which ones I want to use for this tutorial and for the next one where I'm going to use those. Every tank has a fill level, right? So a specific level that the tank is filled right now. So the, if the water is, if, if the tank is full, the number is very high. If it's empty, it's very low. Something in between and something in between. This is a variable on its own, right? But inside our data type. So it's strange we are nesting, we are stacking, yeah, no, it's called nesting, we are nesting data types. So this fill level is an integer value. I also want, an, every tank should have a maximum level. It's also integer. Every tank should have a minimum level. That's also integer. Every tank, you have to somehow let liquid in and let, let liquid out. So liquid in, that's not integer, that's now Boolean. Because, hey, liquid goes in or not. And then we have liquid out. And that's also Boolean indicating, hey, liquid should go out. If, li if no liquid should go out right now, this will be zero. So Boolean. Um, and then I also want some warning, some type of warning um, out of limits warning. And you see there is this red LED here that should turn on if we are outside of our given limits so if this if we are below our minimum level or above our maximum level then this led should turn on and individually for each of those tanks but you see those are the variables i could now add more and more and more right i could add way way more but that's enough for beginners level i could basically add everything that i want in here <clears throat> yeah so that's now my definition of a tank. What we need to do now is we can, I can now go basically if I want to, I can go to my PLC tags and actually add in my tags. Before you do that, you have to um, actually compile your program once. So click on your PLC and click on compile. If you don't do that, your PLC does not have access to that data type. You need to compile at least once, then you have access to the data type. So I did that. And now I can just create a new thing, new thing, which I can say data type. You see, I now have access to, ooh, this is very, very small. Uh, I now have access to data type tank. So whatever, tank, boop. Data type tank. You see now it's the wrong address. Just click in here and hit enter. Oh, uh, wait, no. Uh, just click in here and. Uh, and do whatever the tool tells you. So now I have this new thing. And you see all of these things are inside of that new thing. So I have a fill level, I have a maximum level, minimum level, liquid out, and so on and so on. This is right now not perfect to do it in the tag table, of course, depending on the case that you have. That's why I delete it and I will make a new block. I want my tank data to be stored in data blocks. So I will create a data block. This I will call tanks. And there I can just say tank one. Tank, let's call it tank zero one because that's how I usually do it. And tank zero two. And those two. They are both of type, make a guess, tank. Uh, if I can find it, there. Usually it's at the bottom or at the top. Tank and tank. And now you can see, this is just one, one line, meaning it's just one variable, because that's what it is. It is just one variable. But this variable has some subtypes. It has one integer, which indicates the fill level, one maximum level, one minimum. You see, all of these belong to tank one. All of these belong to tank two. The structure is the same of every tank. So the structure here of tank one is the same as the structure of tank two. But of course, the values could be different. So for example, if I want my tank one has a maximum fill level of let's say 35 or let's say 2000 whatever that uh, 15000 whatever that means that's the maximum level for tank one of course i need to program that then this is the next video and the minimum level 5000 right 
the tank 2 should have a maximum level of let's say 10,000 and a minimum level of 7,500 right so I can now control each tank individually very easily and the structure here is for both the same that's pretty cool if I now have a third tank make a guess so I can minimize this here again I will just go tank 03 and make a guess tank 3 has the same structure again because it is of our data type. So it's very, very useful if you do the same thing over and over and over again. If you have, for example, a motor, a motor has a current um, current speed, maybe torque, maybe temperature. You could put all of that in a data type, call it motor, and for every motor that you use, you just have one variable with a collection of everything that is this motor, in our case, an indication of what is that tank. As we only have two tanks, I will just delete tank three right now. That's it. Now, um, last thing on here, as I said, next video, I will talk, I will show you how you can actually use this now in the program. The last thing that is a very, very huge advantage over just, you could also just actually do, hey, fill level tank one fill level tank two and those are integer right integer the problem is now uh, if you like can i do this maybe can i just copy and paste i can so this would be just one tank here right and if i need another tank what do i do control paste control paste right so this is going to get bigger and bigger for Every tank we have the same variables and it's bigger and bigger. A huge disadvantage we have when just copying and pasting and not using your own data type is the following. Oh, I realized each of those has a stop button now. Every tank has a stop button or every tank has a pressure. What do we need to do? We need to add a new line here. We say, hey, this is the pressure and that should be in real or whatever. Oh, I need to do that for the other tank as well. So I would do it and then I will say, hey, this is the pressure and this is in real. You see, this is going to be annoying. What we can do, so I will just delete everything that I just copied and pasted because that's nonsense. What I can do for tank one and tank two and tank three, four, five, six, seven, eight, if all of them need a pressure management, I go just to do my data type tank. I add a new line. I say, hey, this is my pressure in the tank it's a real and that's it now every tank will have this this in the data type now in the variable itself which you won't see right now so if i go back to my tank you see this is red because we made changes to the data type select the plc press on compile it will recompile your program and now every tank has the pressure the pressure here and that could be for if you have 30 tanks right you don't want to make 30 changes you can just make this one change and that changes all the tanks it's the same the other way around because i don't have a pressure for my tank so i go here i delete the pressure the problem again hey it's red so i need to recompile boop, boop, done my pressure is gone so you can make very easy very fast adjustments to your data structure they udts are mostly for really organizing your program i will show you uh, how you implement this in your program the next time around right um where we will control these two using a udt <clears throat> uh, and then you will see using udts is very flexible it, it is complicated that's why i'm splitting up in two videos or more um, it is very flexible, but it is actually very, very useful if you are having the same structure over and over and over again, or a very similar structure. You see, I don't have to use them all now. They are here. They are just information. I can use them, but I don't have to. More to this in the next video. Um, yeah, there's not much more to say. If you have any questions, leave a comment below this video. But as I get a lot of comments on my YouTube videos lately, it's very hard to actually answer. Even some of them is already difficult. So sorry already if I can't answer them all. I'll try, but I can't. Um, if you want your questions answered, 
I will put a link in the description below to the forum I've built. You see there's a forum, I can click on forum here and you see there's already some discussions and stuff going on here in the forum. If you want to download the uh, some version of this 3D software here, you can also do that in this uh, on this website on Factory Simulator and it already has like 500, oh, almost 600 downloads. That's pretty cool. Um, so, yeah. Um, and the last thing, of course, do not forget to like, do not forget to subscribe. And if you are bored and if you have too much money, of course, everyone has too much money, except me, you know, except me, I don't have much money. Um, so don't try to rob me. No, serious. Don't try to rob me. There's nothing to get. <laughs> um, I made a GoFundMe, right? As always in my videos, I always mention this at the end. There I made a GoFundMe. I'll put the link in the description below. So, um, for example, thanks, Thomas. Uh, thank, thanks, Mikael. Thanks, Joseph. Thanks, Robert. Wow, that's a, that's a lot. Thank you, everyone. Um, throwing some money in my direction. Uh, but no need, right? You don't need to do that. Those tutorials are free. The only thing you have to do is click the like button click the subscribe button, click the bell, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye. And stay safe and healthy. <laughs>